In those clothes. These are the clothes I usually wear. Ah, but today is not a usual day. For you, maybe it isn't. For me, it's just like any other day. But you can't wear those clothes to the church. I'm not going to the church. But you gotta go. You're the best man. I will not go to your wedding. No, well, you'll be very unhappy. Please, Jacques. might make a slip with that razor and cut your head off. Why don't you pull them out with tweezers and it'll last longer? <laughs> this is not a happy day for poor Jacques. Jacques always loved Lily. I know. But Lily loves me. All the women love Pierre. But Pierre loves only one woman. I won't be able to come to the wedding. Why not? I'll have to help Jacques. I'm sorry, Pierre. I did want to see you and Lily get married. Here. What's this for? It's a wedding present for you. Now that you've taken on a wife, you'll need a new knife to open up the oysters. <laughs> Won't you come to the wedding? It won't seem right. Quick. Come on, Cuff!
Nobody knows Callie. Oh, I don't know you. But I've heard about you, Callie. You're the old Grigri woman. Uh, what do you want? You call me Callie. Child's very sick. Cobb. Who are you talking to? Callie, the Grigri woman. Says she's found a sick child. Wants us to come with her. child. What happened to her? I don't know, but Callie know how to cure her. You take her to my cabin. My cabin is down there, right through there. You carry her, huh? What you do? You want her to die? Go away, Grigri woman. You take her to my cabin. Tell me no how to make her well again. Hi. Who are you? Shakio. At least you can tell me your name. What is it? Is it Marie? Marianne? Ha <laughs> ha, come on. There is no reason for you to be afraid of Jacques. I won't hurt you. What is it? Lynette. Lynette? It's nice. What does the L stand for? Would you like some coffee, Minette? Carl! Minette would like some coffee! Why did you do that? Give them back to me. If they give them back to me. I took nothing from you, Minette. Don't lie. Either you or that old man stole them, and I want them back. What do you think we stole from you? As if you didn't know. Those rings are worth a lot of money, Jacques, and I want them back right now. Give them to me. I don't know nothing about any rings. I'm not a thief, and neither is Cobb. If we robbed you, do you think we would be taking you back to the pit with us? Sorry, Jacques. Somebody stole them. Minette. How is she, Jacques? How is she? Not very good, Cobb. You 
Pierre and Lily have a very nice house, Pierre. Yeah, you should ask everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> Doc! Doc Opie! Oh, Doc! Doc, I got a seat. What's Cobb doing here? Maybe something's happened to Jacques. Wait a minute. Uh, Louis, go to my house and get my satchel. What is it? What's happened? Is it my brother? No, no, no. But come on, come on. Doc? Why is she shaking like that? She's in a state of shock. Well, she doesn't seem to have any broken bones. Pick her up, Jock. Be very gentle with her. Where do you want me to take it, Doc? Your place is the closest. I think Lily'd make a better nurse than Jock. You better stay with Pierre and Lily. You don't mind, do you, Pierre? Of course he doesn't. Let's go. Take it, Pierre. I told you I don't know. Poor Pierre. What do you mean, poor Pierre? I feel sorry for him. Why? It's his wedding day. No man wants two women staying in his house on his wedding day. Poor Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll sleep for a couple of hours. Will she be all right, Doc? It's nothing serious. As soon as she wakes up, you come get me. You don't look too well, Pierre. I think I got some pills that'll help you. Take a couple of those every two hours, you'll sleep like a baby. <laughs> well, someone has to take care of her. But it doesn't have to be you. Today is the first day that I'm your husband and you're my wife. I know. How do you know? Doc Opie gave her something to make her sleep. The minute she wakes up, she moves to somebody else's house. I'll hang up your clothes. Then I'll fix you some dinner. You hungry, Pierre? Yes. I'm very hungry. Don't you like my cooking, Pierre? Who can eat? <laughs> She's awake. Doc Opie said to let him know the minute she woke up. <laughs> well, who are you? Would you like something to eat? No, thank you. I'm going to get Doc Opie and I'll be right back. If you need anything, you just call Pierre. You tell Doc she's got to stay someplace else.
May I have a cigarette, please? like someone gave you a pretty bad eating. No one beat me. I was thrown by a horse. You're not very friendly, Pierre. You don't like me, do you? If you got to know me, I think you'd like me. Well, when Doc gets here, you're leaving when he leaves. But where will I go? I don't know. A rich woman like you must have some fine house someplace. Where do you live? <laughs> Makes you think I'm rich, Pierre. My wife said your clothes are very expensive. Your wife is right. I know why you want me out of your house. Good. Then I don't have to explain it to you. Why, you are afraid of me. What makes you think I'm afraid of you? Don't you know? No. Hi, Jack. How long has it been since you've eaten? A long time, Doctor. Oh, with a little food and some rest, you'll get your strength back in no time. But I can't stay here and oppose that. You can stay here as long as you want to, Manette. See? You're among friends. All you gotta do is concentrate on getting well. Lily, get this young lady some food. And, uh, take Pierre and Jacques with you. I want to be alone with my patients. Jacques, why don't you stay and have supper with oh, us? Oh, you don't want company on your wedding night, Lily. One more isn't gonna make any difference. I can't stay. Good night, Lily. Good night, Jacques. And remember, you'll always be welcome in our home. Jacques, you say Manette's feeling all better? She is? Then why is she still staying at Lily's and Pierre's? Well, if she was staying at your house, would you send her away? No. 
But my wife would. <laughs> Why did you do that? You've been acting like her servant ever since Manette came here. Lily, she's a very bad woman. Oh, dear, how can you say that? Because it's the truth. How do you know? Well, she tells us nothing about herself. We, we don't know where she comes from, where she lived. We don't even know her last name. If she's rich, why would she want to live in a place like the pit? Why? Huh, Lily? Good morning, Manette. Good morning, Lily. Dear. Lily, honey, it's very kind of you letting me wear your clothes. Oh, I'm sure they're not as nice as the ones you're used to wearing. I'll fix your breakfast. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lily. You must have a last name. What is it? Lanier. Why do you stay here? I find the pit very interesting. You must have lived someplace before Jacques found you and brought you here. Where was it? All right, don't answer. But I'll tell you one thing. Today's the last day you stay in my house. Good morning, Jacques. Good morning, Minette. Shame on you, Jacques. This is the first time you've come to see me, sir. I didn't come to see you. I came to talk to Pierre. Oh? He's inside. I know. I'll talk to him later. Jacques. What is it, Minette? Something wrong? Yes. Oh, Jacques, I don't know what to do. Lily's been so good to me, I'd... I'd never do anything to hurt her, but... I like Lily very much, Jacques. You seem to like Pierre very much, too. Or you wouldn't... I hate him. Oh, I know you are his brother, and this is not a nice thing to say to you, but I hate Pierre. If you hate Pierre so much, why do you stay in his house? I'll tell you. But not here. <laughs> what is it that you go to tell me, Minette? Give me a word, and I'll tell Lily. The first time that I stayed at Pierre and Lily's house, the doctor gave me something to make me sleep. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke, Pierre tried to make love to me. Don't you believe me? Oh, I know what you say. It's true. Then why don't you say something? Just before I came into the house that night with Lily and Doc, I passed by the bedroom window. I saw you and Pierre in each other's arms. You didn't seem to mind Pierre making love to you. I hated it, but I was so weak I couldn't stop him. I tried, but he... I understand why you're so cold and why you think... I'm sorry, Minna. I thought... That... I know what you thought. What kind of a woman do you think I am? Oh, please don't cry, Minna. I'm a fool, a stupid fool. You know, the first time I saw you, I thought that you were the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I still think so, that. Will you forgive me? I didn't want to stay at Pierre and Lily's, but Pierre said if I left, he'd tell everybody... He was going to accuse me of horrible things, Jacques. Don't you worry about Pierre. He'll accuse you of nothing. I'll see to that. Thank you, Jacques. Jacques, I'm so alone. 
You don't know what a terrible feeling it is not to have anyone in the world care what happens to you. I care, Minette. How could you care? Why, you don't even know me. Jack, I've got to find some place to stay. Don't you think you should go home, Minette? I have no home to go to. But you must live someplace. Where? If I only... Please, please don't ask me any more questions, Jacques. All right. You could stay here if you want to. Oh, I could do that. Why, people would talk. They'll have nothing to talk about. You stay here and I'll move in with Cub. You're so kind, Jacques. Jacques! Jacques! I've got to go, Minette. Jacques! Huh? Will you forgive me? For what? For calling you a thief. Oh! <laughs> that. I'd forgotten all about that. Minette, if somebody stole your rings, it must have been old Callie. Who's Callie? The old Greek Greek woman who find you unconscious near Oyster Shell Road. I thought you found me. No, no, Callie found you first, then came and got cub in me. We are going back to La Forge Country, Minette. I'll step in on old Callie. If she's got your rings, I'll get him back. You know, all the gris gris are thieves. How can I ever repay you for all you've done? Oh, it's nothing. I, I've done nothing. Goodbye, Minette. Goodbye, Sharon. If we're going to get any moss today, we better get started. Cobb, huh? you mind if I bunked at your place for a while? Why, uh, sure, Jacques. You can stay with me as long as you like. Cobb, today we work real hard. Now that I'm a married man, I gotta make lots of money. Poor old Jacques. He looks like he'd like to kill me. Time will make everything all right, Pierre. I hope so. I love him like a brother. <laughs> What's she doing in Jacques' house? Manette is gonna stay there. Are you jealous, Pierre? Are you crazy? She's a bad woman. She shouldn't be staying in Jacques' house. Well, she may be bad for you because you have a wife, but she isn't bad for Jacques. Maybe she'll make him forget that he's in love with Lily. All right, Jacques. Go out! You don't mind if I go with you, do you, Jack? No, Minette. You're welcome.
hot day. Cobb? Pretty hot, huh? Better day for fishing than for collecting moss. Uh, Cobb? Huh? Where did Ninette go? Came ashore to look for Callie. Doc? I'm sorry Lily doesn't love you. I almost wish she loved you instead of me. I know how much you love Lily. What do you say like that? Never mind, Pierre. I don't want to talk to you. Well, you're going to. Got some things to tell you. So Minette's going to be staying at your place, huh? Well, now you listen to me. You better shut up, Pierre. I'm not going to shut up until you hear what I have to say. If you don't like Minette, why do you let her stay on with you and Lily? I didn't want her to, but she wouldn't leave. I should have told Lily the very first night what she was. Telling your wife that you tried to make love to another woman on your wedding night? It wouldn't be nice, would it, Pierre? Is that what she told you? She didn't have to tell me. I saw you myself. I gotta tell you. She forced her love on me. Jacques, she's a tramp. A nymphomaniac. <laughs> Listen to me. Let me tell you what happened. No, Jacques. No, no, no. No way. Now you're going to listen to me. Maybe that'll cool you off and you'll listen to me. Come back and pay old Callie a visit. I was told that you were the one who found me. That's right. If I hadn't have found you, you might have died. Well, I came here to thank you, Callie. Well, that's very sweet of you, dearie. Not many people think so kindly of poor old Callie. But I was just going to sit down and have some soup. Won't you join me? No, thank you, Callie. I can only stay a minute. Oh, you can stay longer than that. We have a lot to talk about, dearie, don't we? <laughs> oh, you gave me such a fright, I dropped the dipper into the soup. Oh, I'll have I to... didn't come here to thank you, Callie. I came here to get these. Oh, you stole them from me and I want them back. I'll give them back to you, dearie. These beautiful rings weren't made for these gnarled fingers of mine. They were made for beautiful hands like yours. But before I give them back, I want to know what you're going to give me. I'm not going to give you anything. These rings are very expensive. Surely you're going to give old Callie a reward for finding them. You didn't find them. You stole them from me. Now take them off and give them back. I won't take them off until I know how much you're going to give me. I'm old and very poor. <laughs> You'll never get them off that way, dearie. I had a time to get them on myself. I had to use butter to squeeze them on. What are you going to do? You don't have a stick to get the dip out, Callie. Oh. It'll be much easier to use your hand. Oh, don't, dearie, don't. I'll... I want my rings. 
stop it. I'll give them back to you. rings were never meant for the likes of you. And nor for the likes of you either, dearie. Minette! Minette! We've got to hurry and get back to the pit. Why? Pierre and Jacques had a terrible fight. Pierre's hurt real bad. Well, now, I wonder what they were fighting about. What do men usually fight about? like that when he fell in the falling hook, Cobb? What'd you pour on me, whiskey? Oh, no, indeed. Whiskey's only to be taken internally. Sit down <laughs> here, let me bandage it. That shoulder will stiffen up on you in the morning. You won't be able to use it. It'll be two or three days before you can go back to work. Maybe that's just as well. Keep you and Jacques apart. Give him time to cool off. Here comes Lily. How much do you, Doc? One dollar. Five dollars for taking care of Manette. Not me. I ain't responsible for her. I treated her in your house. Miss Lanier has cost me enough already. If she owes you five bucks, you better get it from her. What happened? Nothing serious, Lily. Thanks, Doc. Uh, did you say Lanier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, take care of it, Lily. Keep those two birds apart until this wing heals. Lanier. Minette Lanier. Somehow that has a familiar ring. You know, if it wasn't for Cobb, that fool Jacques would have killed me. Yeah, why do you hate Minette so? Never mind. You just stay away from her. Why? Because I'm your husband and I'll tell you to. Where are you going? Take these back to Manette. All right. But you come right back here. I brought your clothes, Minette. Thank you. Excellent sewer. They're almost like new. What's the matter, Lily? Oh, I've never seen such beautiful rings. Yes, they are beautiful. Your husband must be very rich. Mm -hmm. 
Jock, we've been partners ever since Papa died. I want to keep it like that. I don't. From now on, we are partners no longer. Please, Jacques, you can't do this. Oh, save your breath, Lily. He's a crazy man. Crazy men don't make sense. Look, Jacques, you got a Jeep, two boats, barges, equipment. What about that? There's a list of everything we own. Half you keep, half I keep. That's fine. But what about Cobb? We can't split him in half. Bob, you've always liked Pierre the best. You better work for him. No, Jacques. Even though I hit you on the head, I, I like you both the same. You work for Pierre. Jacques. Well, Cobb. Like the Gio brothers are no more, huh? I told you to stop seeing Manette. I'm going to see her and I'm going to talk to her anytime I want to. Just because you don't like her, no reason for me not to. I'm your husband and you do what I tell you to. She's a bad woman. You always say that, but you never tell me why you think she's bad. Well, you just take my word for it. She's what I say she is. Besides, I, I think she's done something wrong. That's why she's down here in the pit where nobody can find her. What makes you think anybody's looking for her? Well, why else would she be staying here? Maybe she's staying here because she's in love with John. Huh? You know, he's just fool enough to fall in love with her. But Manette doesn't love him. You can bet your life on that. Now, you stay away from her. I think you know everything, don't you? No. But I know everything there is to know about women. Oh, you do, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know how many girls I turned down to ask me to marry. But when you proposed, I accepted. You know why? No, what? I never ask you to marry me. You're the only girl I ever asked to marry me. You know why? Because you love me. Because my Lily's the sweetest little girl in the whole world. You two ought to do that inside. Now, out here, we got an audience. <laughs> Hello, Doc. I was just going to fix some coffee with... Would you like some? Well, Lily, it didn't look to me much like you were thinking about making coffee. Oh. What's on your mind, Doc? 
Minette Lanier. What about her? Well, you don't need a doctor to tell you your brother's in love with her. Jacques said he found her up on a road in the Lafouche interior. You know, that's up near Grange Hill. A lot of rich people live in Grange Hill. So? Pierre, sometimes it pays to be a literate man. Here's a month-old copy of a New Orleans newspaper I subscribe to. I ain't interested. I think you'll be interested in this. What do you make of it? Well, the Minette Lanier, who's living over in Jacques' houseboat, sure didn't commit suicide. Obviously. Maybe she's a cousin or something. Maybe. Well, there's one way to find out. I'll take this paper up and show it to her. I'll show it to her. You stay here and have some coffee with Lily. Without knock. Seems that I'm not the only Minette Lanier in the world. Didn't you know that woman? No. That's funny. Why? There are probably a hundred Minette Laniers that I don't know. Not in Grange Hill. There was another Pierre Guillo who lived around here. I'd certainly know him. What makes you think I come from Grange Hill? Well, when Jacques found you, you weren't more than ten miles from there. So I figure that's where you come well, from. Well, you figure wrong, Pierre. If you don't come from Grand Chill, where do you come from? Where I come from, it's none of your business. Those rings must cost a lot of money. Who gave them to you? Maybe nobody gave them to you. Maybe you stole them. Or maybe you got them in another way. I'm not a thief, and I'm You're not You're worse a... than a thief. How dare you coming me? What he read in the newspaper. Did you tell Minette about it? Uh-huh. Well, what'd she say? Nothing. I'm gonna take me a little trip. I'll be back in a while. Where are you going? Grange Hill. Let me go with you, Pierre. Please, Pierre. <laughs>
Pardon me, sir. Could you tell me where I could find the grave of Manette Lanier? Right over there. Thank you. I could find the grave of Manette Lanier. You don't have to go much further. You'll find a husband right over yonder. Drinking himself to death right alongside her. Thank you. Who are you? I'm Pierre. Pierre Guillaume. And this is my wife, Lily. Go away. Are you Clay Lanier? Yes, I'm Clay Lanier. Did you know my wife? No, I didn't. What are you doing here? I know a girl who has the same name as your wife, and I thought they might be related. My wife had no relations by the same name. There was only one Manette Lanier. There'll never be another. A wonderful woman. Sure she was. And now that you know that neither myself or my wife was related to your friend, there's no reason for you to remain here in war. I know why you're here. Curiosity. You want to know how my wife killed herself? No, I tell you, I know this. This girl... is it right here. This is the pistol that she used to remove herself from this unhappy world. She took this gun and she pressed it. To her temple. Fire. Except my wife made sure that the chambers weren't empty. You see, Manette was a much braver human being than I. Now go away. I don't want strangers ogling at my wife's grave. Go, go away! How much whiskey you got to drink before you can walk like that? Miss Lanier, where do you live? Where's your home? Newspaper clipping. That's what brought you here? That's right. About a month ago. Jacques, my brother? Mm. He was picking moss in the bayou up at La Foche. La Foche? It's there here. Callie, that old Grigri woman. She came to him and said she had found a girl lying in the road in the woods, unconscious. Well, he, he went and there she was, still as could be. Well, he brought her home and she was in pretty bad shape. This woman. Was she wearing riding clothes? Yes, sir. Bird. Must be her. Oh, I'm sure it's not Mr. Manier. Well, there's one way to find out. I've got a picture of this Nina in the house. I get it. He must never find her. Please, sir. You must tell Mr. Lanier the picture he shows you is not the woman you know as Minette Lanier. Why? Because I don't want him to ever find her. If he does, I know something's going to happen. Is that her? Is that her? No, sir, I, I've never seen that woman before. You sure? Yes, sir. If I wasn't a married man, well, I, I sure could go for her. Who is she? That is Nina Dupre. Someday I'll find that woman. 
when I do, I'll kill her. Kill her like she killed my Minette. Mr. Ramirez, you told me your wife committed suicide. She killed herself, all right. Because Nina and I gave her no other choice. Did we? Did we, Bert? But, Mr. Lanier, I don't think Mr. and Mrs. are interested in hearing about her. Oh, they're interested, Bert. Very interested. You know all about Nina Dupre? Tell him. Tell him, Bert. Tell him. We better start for home, Pierre. Bert. Yes, sir. We're leaving now. I want to thank you very much for pretending you didn't recognize Mr. Prey's picture. Why didn't you want me to? Killing her won't bring Mrs. Lanier back, and it won't make Grange Hill the way it used to be before that woman came here. Bert. Yes, sir? Look, I did you a favor. How about you doing one for me? I'll do anything I can for you, Mr. Gill. Then tell us why Mrs. Lanier killed herself. All right. About six months ago, Mrs. Lanier was training a green horse to take the jumps. I never saw a woman who could handle a horse like Mrs. Lanier. Well, at the last second, the horse refused to take the jump. Mrs. Lanier took an awful spill and broke her back. Doctors say she wouldn't be able to walk for a long time. During the comedy accident, Mr. Prey came to Grange Hill. Seeing saw Mrs. Lanier couldn't move about none. Doctors thought time would pass easier for her. She had a woman her own age to stay with her, to be a sort of companion to her. Instead, she turned out to be a companion for Mr. Lanier. The first time I saw the way she looked at Miss Lanier, I knew there was going to be trouble. In the beginning, Miss Lanier liked her a whole lot. She felt sorry for it. Have you ever done this kind of work before, Nina? No, ma'am. Miss Lanier. We're going to spend a lot of time together, so why don't you call me Minette? Thank you. Dr. Thomas told me you worked in the cotton mill. Did you like it? I hated it. <laughs> I'm sure I would, too. Hello, darling. Well, how are you two getting along? Just fine, Clay. No uh, personality clashes? None at all. Well, then it's all settled. Oh, Nina, Bert's driving into town. I thought you'd like to go along with him, pick up some clothes. All right, Mr. Lanier. Now, wait a minute, young lady. You must remember you're not a servant in this house. If I can call you Nina, you certainly can call me Clay, right? Thank you. Why? I've got closets filled with clothes, and I won't be able to wear them for a long time. We're almost the exact size before. So if you don't mind wearing my clothes, there's no need for you to go into town. That's a wonderful idea, honey. Time somebody gets some use out of me. Come on. Uh, let's see now. Ah, here's one. Well, looks like it was made for, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. And so are you. I've always said a beautiful girl must wear beautiful things. Isn't that right, darling? Yes, dear. Nina, I hope you enjoy your stay at Grange Hill. I'm sure I will, Clay. Goodbye, darling. In the beginning, Nina and Mrs. Lanier were together all the time. They hit it off real well. They enjoyed each other's company. Evenings, Nina would read to Mrs. Lanier, play cards and things like that. Sometime, Mrs. Lanier would join them. And when he did, Nina would pay no more attention to him than she did to Mrs. Lanier. I always thought because she wore Mrs. Lanier's clothes, she actually thought she was mistress of Grange Hill. Mrs. Lanier suspected what Nina was up to, but I guess she didn't quite know what she could do about it. At 
wasn't long before Nina was spending most of her time with Mr. Lanier. They would meet every morning. Mr. Lanier would give her riding lessons. And to see them together, no one would ever think she was hired to be a companion to Mrs. Lanier. The way she threw herself at him was scandalous. Whenever he drove into town, Nina always seemed to figure out some reason for going along with him. And she always managed to get as close to him as possible. Miss Lanier watched him from the bedroom window, and she was very concerned with what she saw. Until it was too late, Mr. Lanier never seemed to be aware of what Nina was up to. He thought she was just being friendly because she was grateful to him for bringing her to Grange Hill. Mrs. Lanier stood it as long as she could. And when she could stand it no longer, she decided something must be done about Nina. Bert said you wanted to see me, Lanier. I do, Nina. Clay said I was learning to ride almost as well as you used to. Nina, I won't be needing you any longer. What do you mean? I mean I want you to leave Grange Hill and I want you to leave tonight. Why do you want me to leave? I don't feel I owe you any explanation. Let us just say I made a mistake not treating you like a servant when you... I'm not your servant. Anyone else's. I'm every bit as good as you are. I know why you want me to leave. I'm sure you do. So there's no need to continue this discussion. You can take any of my things you like particularly. You're not getting rid of me that easily, Minette. I like it here, and I'm going to stay. Clay loves me, so if anybody leaves Grange Hill, it'll be you. Goodbye. Where are you going? Away from Grange Hill. Well, don't you like it here? No, I do. I don't want to leave, but I have to. Why? Clay Minette has been awfully good to me. I like her so very much. It would kill me if I ever did anything that would hurt her. And Minette's very fond of you, too. She wouldn't be if she knew how I felt. Oh, Clay. I'm so ashamed of myself. Don't cry, Nina. There's no reason for you to be ashamed of yourself. Yes, there is, Clay. I'm in love with you. Clay, I love you so. Oh, Clay. I don't want to leave. I don't want you to leave.
it's not really our Nina, fault? Nina, Nina, I'm, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have done what we did. We ever saw Mr. Bray. But Mr. Lanier has never stopped trying to find her. I hope he never does. Killing her won't bring Mr. Lanier back. No, Bert, nothing can do that. You think a lot of Mr. Lanier. He's the finest man I've ever known. Goodbye, Bert. Goodbye, Miss Gill. So long. Bye. Right. Why did they leave without saying goodbye to me? Well, I thought you were still asleep, Mr. Lanier, and they seemed so anxious to get started for home, they wanted me to say goodbye for them. Mm-hmm. Bert, do you think they recognize that picture, Nina? Oh, I'm sure they did, Mr. Lanier. You heard him say he never saw that picture before in his life. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, Bert. But you can't always depend on what people say. Besides, he said that girl had riding clothes on. Get in the car. Yes, sir. be there when you talk to her. Why not? I don't know. 
I really don't know, Pierre. I, I guess I feel uncomfortable around her. I really did like her. I'm going home. What are you in such a good mood about? It's a beautiful day. Nina? You didn't tell him where I was, did you? No, I didn't. I don't like you. But I don't want Mr. Lanier killing you either. And I don't want that fool brother of mine thinking he's in love with you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to drive you into Hammond and put you on a bus for New Orleans. But I haven't got any money or clothes. I'll give you the money for the bus fare. Well, I'm not going. I'm staying right here. Jock's a poor man. I don't know what you want to stay here for. I need time to decide what... You don't need any more time, honey. Get going. For one of Where is she? Look, Pierre, I don't want to have to kill you, too. But you better stay where you are. Ah! <laughs> 
drive on into Hammond. Just leave the jeep at the bus station. But he'll follow me. I'll and... see that he doesn't. Now go on. Beat it. Hey, wait a minute. Thanks, Pierre. What? The rings. Give them to me. No. Then we're staying right here till Clay gets here. He'll kill me. He can't kill you if you're not here. I can't start without the keys, Mr. Lindsay. Give me those keys. No. Bert's right. Killing her won't do any good. You best just try and forget her. It's a long walk back to town. Give me a lift. All right, Peter. You're in the car. Pierre. Goodbye, Mrs. Gill. Bye. Oh, I feel so sorry for Mr. Lanier. Pierre, how did you know Manette was bad? Your husband's a very smart man. And you just remember that, Lily. Pierre! Pierre! You, you better go away for a few days. Go away? What for? He's Jacques. He's very angry. He's like a madman. He said he would kill you. I've just done Jacques a big favor. When I tell him the truth, he'll want to kiss me and not kill me. No, no. Stay away from Jacques. He will not listen to anything you have to say. He'll listen to what I have to say. Poor oh, Jacques. Now, look, I, I know you're mad, but will you just listen to me? Listen to me. You let me out of here, Pierre. Well, now, Lily, maybe Jacques will listen to me. 